Let's have a think about this task and what we were doing here, okay? The question, of course, was how many vowels? Which is actually not technically accurate. It really should be what proportion of this bag are vowels, right? Let's actually jot that down because we're going to use this scenario as our lens to understand what's going on here, what's the concept, okay? What proportion are vowels? And, of course, we had a look at this bag of 200-ish, by the way, it's actually 225 exactly, and I'll come back to why I know exactly in a minute. We looked at this bag of 200-ish Scrabble tiles to use it as kind of just a scenario for a sort of you know, indeterminately large set of data that we can grab a sample of that we can know comprehensively, and we know that this sample is going to give us some representation of what the rest of the bag is like, but we can never know perfectly, right? Because if we did it perfectly, it's like, well, then we've done the census, or we've done the election, and that thing is like, you know, hundreds of millions or, or billions of dollars more expensive than just doing a sample, right? So, every time we sampled, we did two things, right? We counted up the number of things that we were interested in, the number of vowels, and what do we call that again? For a Bernoulli trial, we call that a success. a success. So we've got our number of successes, and then we divided by, what do we divide by? What was in our hand? Yeah, the total of our sample, right? The total size of our sample. And each time you can see, we all got a different sample each time, which is exactly how statisticians normally work, right? So this is, I would say, the size of the sample, right? And we just kind of denoted this with x over n. Now you can see I have my x divided by n column here, right? Now just for a moment, rewind like three, four years, right? You've done probability like this before, and when you are going in your experiment and you're doing this over and over again, and then you divide, I guess you would call this favorable outcomes, by whatever your sample space is in that case, what do we call this fraction? It's got at least two names that you've known for many, many years. Any takers? I'll give you a clue. One starts with RF. This is back in year eight days. You're counting how many times something comes up, how, how frequently it comes up. So the F stands for frequency, but you don't just say, you don't just say the frequency is six, you say it relative to how many things you actually counted from, right? So this is not just frequency, this is the relative frequency. Yeah, we almost got there, okay. There was another name for this, there's another name for it. Um, every time you went in here, it was a bit like you did an actual, like sort of, you know, in science when you, you have a look at a situation, you like put the Bunsen burner on, make the measurements, you call that an, starts with an E, an experiment, right? So we do an experiment every time we take a sample, right? So we would also call this the experimental Frequency of probability, it tended to be actually. Um, as opposed to, what's the opposite of experimental? Theoretical. It's theoretical. When you don't go ahead and do the experiment, where you're like, it should be this, right? Now, my writing is going a bit wild. Um, theoretical probability is nice when you've got a situation like a die or flipping a coin, right? But it's kind of not much good when you've got no idea what the answer is. That's what you're trying to determine, right? So sometimes, relative frequency or experimental probability are all you've got to use. However, we are in the um, territory of like proper statistics, trying to understand um, samples in populations, right? So even though it's exactly the same idea, it's literally exactly the same idea, gets a new name in U12 statistics. We call this, does anyone say it? Binomial. This is actually probably gonna be a binomial distribution, but this particular thing, this particular fraction, exactly. it comes from a sample, right? Because literally you're sampling every time. And then what you're asking for is, the ratio, or the fraction, or the proportion between the successes and the total. So we call this a sample proportion. And if you want, um, you can make this heading now that we're spoiler free. I would call these statistical proportions, as opposed to proportions back in just like, oh, what's the proportion of this circle that's been shaded, right? Uh, we're particularly thinking about proportions in the realm of statistics. Now, let's have a look at this column, right? So x divided by n, every single one of those 
is a sample proportion. Same population, right? But every time you resample, you get a new sample proportion because you never know which actual uh, tiles, which people you're surveying, all that kind of thing, right? So sample proportions, evidently, there's a, there's a range, okay? Now, when we take all of the sample proportions together, this is why I asked the whole class to do it, right? And to come over here to my spreadsheet. Does anyone know how I would go about taking all of the data you did and synthesizing it in some way? What would be a sensible way to take everything in this column and sort of, you know, take it all together? An average is like a really sensible way to do this, right? So thank you, Excel. All you have to do is go equals average. And then I want everything in column D, right? Does anyone know what I should type, by the way, for that? I could, I could actually just like list the cells, or I could be super lazy, as mathematicians are, and I can say from D to D. And that's a way to just state the entire column, OK? And then when I hit Enter, it's going to give me an answer. By the way, hopefully, even though it's like, hey, what's it going to do with that? Any non-numerical data just kind of ditches it, right? So before I hit go, because I'm actually interested to see, as you look across this, right? have a look at all the numbers there. You'll recognize some of the numbers that you typed as well. I wonder what your gut feel for what the estimate would be. And how far above and below we went. And have a look. Let's see what we get. Let's just put it here. Average. Huh. So what's this telling us? That number there is the average of every number in column D, which sort of makes sense, doesn't it? You can see that some numbers below, some numbers above. Does that sort of match with your anecdotal experience of counting your own tiles? Some of you are like nodding, some of you are shaking your heads. Okay, really interesting. So what this is suggesting to us is that roughly 37% of this bag is valves. That's what it's suggesting. And remember, like it's just the product of very imperfect process, right? So. Let's try and summarize this for a minute before I tell you what the actual answer is, because yes, I counted how many vowels there are. Okay? This idea of a sample proportion, we give it some notation, as we often do when we have a new thing. Uh, wrong color. We call this thing, when we name it a sample proportion, rather than one of these two things here, we call it a letter P with a hat over the top. Right? When you see this, that means sample proportion, and the sample proportion can take on many different values depending on your sample. Okay? The thing that we just did, which was to average out all of the various sample portions that we've got, do we have a name for this, a more uh, technical name than averaging? It's a measure of central tendency, right? They all start with an M. Which one's this one? This is the mean, right? So when I took the mean of all of these, which again, in the context of statistics, we have another name for this. It starts with an E. Does anyone know it? Expected value. expected value. So when you take the expected value, or the mean, or the average, don't you love that they have like a million names for the same thing, OK? When you take the expected value of all of your sample proportions, right? this in theory should be the actual probability for the whole thing. And the more samples you took, the better it would get. right? Now. This thing here, lowercase p, very understated, right? In theory, is no longer the proportion for a sample. It would be the proportion for, what would you call that when you have everything? Population. It's a population, right? US population to 300 million. We mean the whole thing. So we call this, this here, the population proportion. Now, I'm just going to make a note here. Two notes, actually. Number one, what I just described, that this thing is what happens when you take the expected value of all those things, right? That's an imprecise process in real life. It's imprecise because we never know and sample, 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 sample. It's always not 100% sure, OK? However, frequently in the syllabus and in the textbook and in questions that you encounter, we will treat this as a thing that we actually magically know. It's like we know what this value is through some means that is not specified. We actually have this value, not roughly, we know it exactly. And if we knew it exactly, we could work out how close we actually are through this limiting process. And <laughs> remember I said magic process? Sometimes it's not that magic. I sat and I counted. 
225 in total. And believe it or not, this is to answer this question, 225 in total. And believe it or not, exactly 90 vowels. What's that? I promise I didn't actually do this on purpose. You might have noticed there's two different Scrabble tile sets that are chucked in there. And the fact that they ended up these weird, like, exact numbers is kind of freaky. But anyway, someone got it for me? 40%. It's exactly 40%. Right? I didn't engineer that. That's just what came in the bag. Okay. Now, just have a look. Did we get in the ballpark? Yeah, yeah. We got very close. And I think the further we got, the closer we ought to get. But I say ought to because, as we have seen many times throughout the last, not trying to think about elections and referendums over the last few years, right? Uh, no matter how many surveys you take, no matter how many samples you take, you never can be 100% sure that you get exact because, you know, it's not an exact science, right? And whenever you go and survey, you get a different group of people and sometimes you get biases, like people just don't want to pick up the phone to answer the survey, so you don't get those people in your data set. So that's why we never get exactly, but we can get pretty close. Make sense? Okay.